I set this one up to be the downgrade button. I'm gonna show you the inside of my hacked dev kit, test kit, hackers, PlayStation 3, something like that. I'm gonna show you what I built. And here it is. This is a PlayStation 3 Slim 3001B. Now, to give some brief detail on this PS3, this right here is the E3 flasher. This thing can flash the BIOS chip on the PS3. It's called the NOR flash. Now, typically you would have a micro SD card adapter right here, but mine broke. So I found a random one that was like a subboard inside of a laptop. And then I just found the pinout for the SD card and then it just works. Okay, so this is the outside of the console. I'm missing the hard drive hover mine broke i believe and then this is the back of the console that is the serial number and then there's a couple other things you can see some buttons right here first off obviously that's the power button this is the eject button right here but eject is not wired to eject anymore eject is actually the program button for the pico that's on the bottom when you want to program the pico you just hold eject and then plug in the Pico and then you can program it. This button right here, I believe I set this one up to be the downgrade button. So whenever you want to downgrade the console to a different firmware, you hold this button down, plug in the console, wait for the mod chip to stop blinking, which is the LED indicator for the power button. And then once it's done, then you can, or actually the console will just automatically turn on. This is, it's pretty beta, but yeah, that's basically how it works. Then there's also one that turns off the mod chip and that also another one that has boot select don't ask me how that one works. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> All right, let's open this thing up. I was say, I think I only put two screws in this thing. Let's see. Oh, there's one right here, but I think that one's just stuck. Now, to take this thing apart, you have to be super careful because the way that the E3 flasher sits, because it's kind of part of the top part of the console, this is going to come off like this. And then we got to disconnect the E3 linker right here. Set that off to the side. Now we can take the top and the flasher itself and move it off to the side. And yeah, there was paper towel. This was uh, cleaning up isopropyl alcohol and in insulating the flasher. So you can kind of see what's going on here. So we have the E3 linker that is connected with all these wires here. These are all insulated enameled copper wire, which is not what I would recommend for soldering the E3 linker into the console. It's what I had available to me at the time, and it was pretty simple to just solder them and solder them to the board. The power button. So the power button, originally I put a USB port here on the front, and that was to program the flasher, but it was a little too much, too complicated, and so I abandoned that idea and this button's kind of falling out uh, and that's how the buttons are wired there there's a common ground for all of them and then there's just the wires go to the bottom of the console or to the top part of the console where that orange one is right there all right so let's dig a little bit deeper and take out the power supply which apparently i put uh, two playstation 5 screws in and i need a completely different screwdriver and power supply should just come right on out just like that. Apparently this is a replacement power supply. Okay, we got these two here, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas. We can just very carefully fish them out. We also cannot forget to take out the hard drive. If I remember correctly, we should just be able to take the console right out. And there we go. Here is the underside of the console. <laughs> As you can see, the power button board kind of has to stay together on the console. So let's get down to business. This is a Raspberry Pi Pico. This Pico is programmed to send an exploit and inject code directly into this xdr ram while it's turning on so it does that every time it turns on and it basically has just it's pretty much 100 percent success rate for the most part the way it's wired in is it's got its own power that comes in through the five volts over here it does have a ground which is common ground all over the board doesn't matter then it has two lines that go to the xdr ram then it also has two lines that go to the southbridge uart or it's the syscon no it's this is the syscon uart over here. the southbridge uart is over here too but uh, these two are for the syscon uart there's a wire here that i put right here this blue one this one is for the red led basically whenever the led the active led on this is turning on which there is no led here the power from that led actually goes up here so i can actually see what's going on on the pico then the pico will you know do its thing and then we can turn it on etc then there is one two yeah i think there's three different buttons maybe or two different buttons that i have wired in one of them does the recovery menu so pretty much you can downgrade this console at any time and then of course we have the other one that disables the mod chip uh the other thing is that we have the, the flasher so the flasher is hooked up to these nor points we did have the opportunity to use a e3 flasher clip cable but those clip cables are really not reliable and it's better just to hardwire and so that's what i did there were no known kte-001 points 
available online, but the JSD and the JPT model motherboards are very similar to the KTE. So I just did some best guessing and found the correct ones. That's how we have those points available. I wonder if reconnecting this one point would fix the system because I, I can see one of the wires accidentally got disconnected. I don't mean for this video to be on the shorter side of things, but you know, I, I'm not exactly sure if this is something that like I want to continue with. This was a project that I did over the summer, like uh, spring, summertime. It was one of those things where I decided I was like, you know what, I'm going to shelve this. And then I got back interested into it and then I shelved it again. But yeah, this console is the first console in the world to have downgraded firmwares, the, the KTE model. Before, this had never been done. This was the very first console to ever downgrade, period. So I want to say a big thank you to Kafu. He's the original one that utilized and found this exploit, as well as Jose Zakaxau. I'm going to call it that name because I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. But And then there are many others in the scene that uh, contributed to this, me being one of them. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity because the PS3 is one of, it's literally chef's kiss in my life. I love the PlayStation 3. If you guys want to see if I can try to fix it, let me know. And I guess I'll try. By the way, YouTube thinks you should click this video right here.